Yeah, how about that Velcro? <laughs> Hello, hello, my fishies. It's Kat from the Fire Tuna Club here. Check out my totally professional manicure. That's right, I did it myself. So let's get to the point of what today's video is going to be about. This is a basic skirt pattern that works for Barbie or Monster High. Please make sure you're printing the right pattern. If you don't already have the pattern, head over to firetunaclub.blogspot.com to get it. You can find them by skill level or by doll type. And if there's anything you don't understand, there is a helpful terminology guide. If the terminology guide doesn't have what you need, just hit up YouTube for that specific thing that you don't quite understand, and there will be a video included if I haven't already made it. Also note, you can put as much or as little effort into this basic pattern as you want to make it look really good. And if you guys want me to cover the variations as seen in this Monster High skirt, hit the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to do a follow-up video talking about the variations and the modifications to make this skirt even better. The things you will need for this pattern are fabric of your choosing, fabric scissors, paper scissors, pins or fabric weights, velcro or snaps, a needle and thread or your sewing machine, and optional some kind of marking chalk or marking pencil. Fabric glue is also optional. Both skirts are made largely the same way. There is only one additional step for the Monster High skirt, which I will cover in the video for those of you watching for Monster High. Otherwise, gonna be working with the Barbie skirt because of the size difference. Before you start step one, please don't forget to check the pattern scaling chart to make sure that it printed off correctly. And the pattern is correct. Make sure you use a ruler that's actually an inch and not like an inch and some change. <laughs> Once you've confirmed your pattern's printed at the right size, you'll want to go ahead and cut it out and finish step one up by tracing that pattern onto your material and cutting it out or putting it straight onto your material and cutting, whichever you prefer. Which means going into the next step, you should have three pieces, a front and two backs. For that next step, step number two, you'll want to take one back piece to your front piece, right sides together, pause this clip to read for the explanation. Then you want to pin it in place and hand sew or machine sew it whichever you prefer. To my novices using hand sewing, I would recommend practicing with your back stitch a whole of a heck of a lot. I don't like hand sewing, so mine needs a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. And for my novices who are not quite yet familiar with their sewing machine, I would recommend using a seam gauge, using it to make sure your needle is where it needs to be, and using the edge of the foot to line up your seam allowance properly because as you can see in my clip my middle and the edge of my sewing foot did not equal a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat this step to the other side and if you want to cut down the seam allowance a little bit get your scissors and turn it from a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch. It's magical. Now if it's looking a little lopsided and you're feeling a little down don't worry because I've made this skirt about eight times and I can still mess it up. So for the next step, you will want to hem the top and the bottom. I used my fabulous trick. I personally like to sew at the quarter inch, so I was doing a half inch mark to show where when I folded it, the edge should meet. You can do the same trick. Just don't do this here, cause no. You can see the moment that once I'm done struggling with the glue, I realized what I've done. Like I said, I've done this skirt a lot for both Monster High and Barbie, and I can still mess it up. So just take your mistakes with stride. Heck, I went and finished this skirt anyway with that sliced up hem. Uh, once I figure out what I'm gonna do with it, you'll see <laughs> what it ends up as. Or if I throw it away, I'll let you know. And if you're afraid of doing my mistake, you can just mark the quarter inch down to where to fold it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, anyway, the real step this time. You can mark at your seam allowance where you want to fold or double your seam allowance and mark where you want to fold to. I use Fabrifix? What am I doing? Anyway, use a glue of your choice. You can sew it with these curved edges on doll clothes. I like to glue it and then follow up with a decorative stitch later on. Make note of your glue's dry time and give it that time to rest. Repeat that step to the bottom. Voila. 
and then we can move on to the next step. Mark your chosen seam allowance as before and use either glue or sewing to fold one side in. This one will be the side that is visible from the outside. An alternate version of the step is simply sewing up the middle halfway so that you have a semi-closed skirt. This only works for Barbie, does not work for Monster High. By this skirt I had completely abandoned the script. You'll want to zigzag, fray check, or use glue on the other side. If you're savvy and slightly possibly a pyromaniac, get a lighter, hit up that polyester, and burn the side so that it doesn't unravel. If you're under 18 watching this, please don't play with fire, let your parents do it. Monster High folks, after this step, you'll want to add a plus one to every step thereafter to follow along with your paper pattern. Everyone else, steps listed as they are. This is where you'll want to attach your ribbon from the front center to the inside back panel, not the outside. Your skirt won't close then. I know what you see here on the screen, but trust me, after the wear and tear, just being able to glue it on the inside and then replace it as needed, it's better than sewing it into the hem in the previous steps. If you've been hemming with glue, this is the point where you'll want to put those decorative stitches in. To ensure proper placement of your closures, you will want to check your skirt on your doll and either mark or pin it in place so you have an idea of where to put your closures. Closure options are as follows. Hook and eye, which I would not recommend for Monster High, Barbie only. Snaps, my personal favorite. And hook and loop tape, more commonly known by the brand name Velcro. Don't you just love when you lose stuff in the mess that is your craft room? I was making these tutorial video skirts for my kid, but since I couldn't find the velcro, I did change gears and decided to close the skirt back with a ladder stitch. If you don't want to do this, you can use velcro and use velcro from the top to the bottom and the close it easy. I would recommend this for anybody making clothes for their children's dolls. Having it close halfway up like I'm doing here means it's harder for them to put it on if they're young and don't have as much dexterity. Since I'm full of fun facts today, I figured I'd warn you, Fabrifix likes eating at nail polish. Sew your closure in. A neat technique I found is actually sewing a small knot. Every time you make a loop around your snap, it makes it more secure. And then largely you're done. I do always include the additional step of making sure that you've finished everything, clipping some loose threads, clipping any corners that need to be done. It's basically your last quality control step before your outfit is ready for your doll to wear it. As seen here. Now keep in mind, I did do a lot of variations on this. Note that this is a very simple pattern, and as I said before, depending on how much or as little effort as you put in, you can make some really lovely skirts. That was the basic one. Using snaps and sewing up the back seam midway. My white and blue one is my bare bones minimum with velcro completely open back. And my lace one was a double layer of the same pattern, just with two pieces of fabric together. Got a nice skirt there too. Like I said, if you guys want more variations such as a split side Monster High skirt that was featured in the video, go ahead and hit the comment section below. And I did want to share with you something amazing that happened while I was editing this video. I've had some comments about my patterns being too simple or not fashionable enough. I am trying to be accessible to every level of sewer, so I am trying to mix it up, give you some easy patterns, and I'm going to start whipping out the intermediate and advanced patterns. Keep in mind guys, I sew clothes for myself, so my level of easy is not your level of easy. And if it is, cool, but it might not be someone else's. So stick around, more patterns are coming. So now for the actual good news, Instagram user Poulpenciel has recently posted all the patterns she's made for free. All you have to do is go check out her profile on Instagram, click that tinyurl.com right there, it'll take you to her Google page where you can download the patterns. Don't forget to read the instructions first and then go pick the right size to download your pattern. This is something I am intending to do over time, I will be releasing more complex patterns here and there. But this is already done for you, so you don't have to wait around for me to get to it. Go check those patterns out. If you do try them, let Octopus in the Sky know. I am so sorry, I don't speak French. And if you try one of my patterns, don't forget to let me know, and I'll see you all when I finish another project.